Hello friends. So this is a group project of heat transfer and we are G27. So we are looking at the common problems with the laptop heating. So I am sure that at one point or other, almost every one of you might have faced this issue and you know how annoying it becomes when your laptop gets overheated. So in this video, we are going to propose some solution that can eventually help to overcome this problem. So all of you will agree with me on this point that laptops have become dominantly used device for professional and academic functions by students, office workers, and almost in every field. It has a very good portability property. And in recent times, work from home also being a major com contributor to its use. One major problem seen with the laptops is overheating of the laptop, which causes operating system lags and reduced battery. Severely overheating may cause damage to the internal components and it would result in a forceful shutdown of the system. The laptop components are designed to work efficiently at a specific range of temperatures, outside which they will start behave erratically. So in this video, we aim to create a model for the laptop cooling system with two, two broad aims in our mind. The first one is to optimally maximize heat loss and dissipation. The other one being the prevention of laptop surface from overheat. So all of you might be wondering that why we have chosen this problem specifically. So as we all know that in recent times, the laptop usage has uh, increased excessively. And we have also attached here some of the files which, uh, which are of global market research report, which is conducted in this uh, 2021 itself. It states that many of the laptop users have commented on this and it states that they are facing a lot of troubles. So you see this problem is a very crucial in this situation. We need to solve the problem as soon as possible to, uh, to get a good user experience for all the laptop users. Our technical problem consists of a GPU chip connected to a copper base via a copper pipe and pins that are placed on the copper base. The GPU is considered to be working at a maximum capacity of 100 watts. We want to find the following three unknowns. The temperature at the end of the fin, which we aim to minimize as per our user story. The heat loss, which can be convection and radiation in each component. And we also want to plot the temperature profile along the length of the system. Coming to the in-depth analysis, we work on the basic components, which are the heat source, which can be either the CPU or the GPU, a solid cylinder, which represents the heat pipes, the cooling fans, which perform the force convection, and the fins, which are the key to the heat dissipation in the laptop. The following are the actual pictures of the components in the laptop. On the left, we see that heat is transferred via the heat pipes to the fins placed on the copper plate, and the fan is performing force convection by blowing away the heat and hence cooling the laptop down. The right pic shows the heat pipes connecting the heat source and the fins. We can see that there are generally two fans and multiple heat pipes in the laptop, but for simplification, we considered a linear system consisting of a single heat pipe and a single fan. We estimated the lens based on these real images. These are the values we took for solving the system based on the images that, that we just showed you. A fluid pipe is approximated as a cylinder with length of 10 centimeters and a radius of 2 centimeters. The copper base is also approximated as a cylinder with length of 3 centimeters and a radius of 3 centimeters. The fin size is considered to be of length uh, 5 centimeters and a radius 0.5 millimeters. And the heat produced by GPU is considered to be almost 100 watts. This is, the, this is the overall control volume of the system in which there is a constant heat supply to the system from the heat source, which is CPU in our case. And we need to estimate temperature and amount of heat released out of the system that is fins. In the report, we have shown all the possible internal control volume, which accounts for calculation of conduction as well as convection for fins, copper base and copper cylinder. Now solving heat flow in co solid copper cylinder. Uh, next, the, solving this differential equation is not feasible. Also in this differential equation, the first term represent the conduction, then convection, and then the other the, the last term represent the radiation. 
as solving this differential equation is not feasible so we need to take a novel approach in which we first consider heat flow due to first conduction and convection second conduction and radiation and finally taking heat flow only due to conduction next as seen in the plot all the three plots are almost coinciding with each other with difference in second point decimal hence the hence to ease our calculation we just took the conduction yeah, conduction due to conduction flow in the solid cylinder in our problem okay uh so um by calculating the conditions for flow and the properties of the lens scales um the, there is only air flow through the fins we are assuming it's through only the fins so the characteristic length for the fins comes out to be the diameter of the fins itself which we have estimated to be about half a centimeter 5 mm um the we have then we went on to calculate the reynolds number of the flow um by using the vd by new formula um the velocity of the air flow was assumed to be 12 meters per second um the 12 meter per second velocity is justified here by the power uh, by the power rating um so the power rating of a, a cpu fan uh, the fin fan is usually about 5 watts so um, we have shown some calculation and we obtained a formula for the velocity of the velocity of the flow in terms of the power the density of air and the area of the flow and then we could got the velocity to be 12 meter per second here is a diagram showing the same um, um then we went on to use the churchill equation and calculated the nusselt number using uh, 0.701 as our prandtl number and the reynolds number we calculated on the previous slide uh, we obtained a nusselt number that is close to 45 so this tells us that uh, majorly the loss is due to convection only approximately 98% this is the 1d model we have um, uh, as explained by gorish in the previous slide um, this model um, this is a general differential equation which is valid for every elemental balance um, this is the resistance network we obtained here the heat source is sending the heat over here we have some losses through convection and radiation um, this is the resistance of the conduction of the copper pipe and then we have the fin resistance and here is the air flow at infinity which we have assumed to be 300 kelvin um after calculating the heat losses at every point after obtaining the temperature profile using the differential equations we solved above um we got um this uh, this kind of uh, values um here the cpu is supplying a 100 watts and we are losing about uh, 5 watts in total with convection and uh, radiation on the copper pipe um then on the copper base we have about um, 2 watts of loss in radiation and convection and then in the fins we have a lot of convection loss because we have uh, optimized our model to do the same the convection loss is comes out to be around 80 and we have placed around 25 fins on this um, on this copper base here is the air flow is in this direction and this is the overall control volume of uh, inside which we have a 100 watt incoming and the calculated outgoings um this was the proposed temperature profile that we proposed without um, actually solving the system we assume that the copper uh, pipe uh, will have a linear graph and the copper base will have a linear graph and the fins will have a curved graph according to the differential equation results and then there is the air at t infinity for analyzing the overall temperature measurements we went through various experimental evidences and we came to know that when the area of the fins is changed we get different heat loss values and whenever the we buy the we buy the fins from general vendors the geometry that is used is generally parabolic and the heat loss through them is pretty high however while solving the 1d uh, model equation we get a das by dx uh, value and that is pretty much uh, pretty much different to calculate while we are using the parabolic profile that's why we simplify the geometry using uh, the chips that are rectangular in shape and while we break the individual chips the thickness of the chips gets uh, smaller and smaller and that so uh, that reduces the overall calculation uh, difficulty difficultiness and that's why it is easier to solve Uh, we have used two different methods to solve this problem as we have shown in our report um the first method we used was a control volume analysis and the second was a temperature profile analysis 
द वे वी अप्रोच कंट्रोल वॉल्यूम एनालिसिस वॉज वी न्यू द वी कुड कैलकुलेट द रेले नंबर ऑफ द ऑफ द सर्फेस ऑफ द ऑफ द कन्वेक्शन एंड देन वी वी यूज द रेले नंबर एंड using the raleigh number we obtained the nusselt number and the nusselt number could be used to calculate the convective transfer coefficients uh, using the hb by k equation um, then we used um, this uh, uh, hb obtained from here and uh, we multiplied it with the area and the temperature difference to estimate the convection heat loss from here uh, what um, then we what we did was we um, took the maximum possible radiation loss this was done by keeping epsilon equal to 1 and taking the Uh, the uh, the temperature the maximum temperature in the pipe and then we uh, calculated the maximum possible radiation loss from here um, after doing that what we did was we found that the radiation and the convection were significantly less than the conduction part so we neglected them and uh, used the simplified resistance network and the resistance is to find the temperature drops at every component um, Uh, using this method, we obtained the temperature drop till the base of the fin, and after we got to the base of the fin, um, we used the extended surface formulas and uh, using the boundary conditions of the specified base temperature and the uh, and the term that the conduction and convection equal are equal at the endpoints, and we calculated the temperature from here. Um, this is how we obtained both the temperature and the losses. The other way we approached this problem was using temperature profile analysis. um here what we did was we made a general differential equation uh, tried neglecting one term at a time um first we neglected convection then we neglected radiation um uh, and then we neglected both radiation and convection and the graphs we got were pretty close so what we said was that um this error is very small so the temperature profile can be estimated as a temperature profile of only conduction in the copper parts um then what we did was uh, we took this temperature profile and then we could easily calculate the uh, convective loss and the radiative loss by just integrating this temperature profile over the lens um this is the final temperature profile that we obtained by solving the differential equation uh, the red line we have obtained this is the copper pipe this is a 10 cm pipe um this is a steep gradient we get here um then after that uh, this green part shows the copper base it's a, it's a relatively smaller base but it's important because it um it, it expands the radius of the pipe and we can put more fins on the pipe after that we have fins here the temperature gradient is not that much but um, what we see is that we are able to obtain a, a heavy heat loss from here which will be showing in the following diagram um the the technical conclusions uh, we arrived were that uh, we assumed the system to be at steady state and our calculations were pretty much able to justify this uh we justify our approximations um after calculating all the heat losses in the system we were able to get to around 87 watts and the incoming heat was 100 watts so within a scope of 13% error we were able to um justify our steady state assumption the end point of the temperature profile we found is around 315 degrees kelvin um this is uh, uh this is reasonable because our average human body temperature is around 310 degrees so the laptop would not feel very hot uh, even when the processor is working at its full capacity of 100 watts the laptop will not uh, feel very hot in the in the lab um, then we uh, then what we obtain was a very fast temperature gradient uh, near the gpu uh, this temperature gradient ensures that the gpu is working at a uh, as high uh, as high capacity as it it can thank you